Okay, this meeting is being recorded. So, um, welcome to this then, the um, first and possibly last ever online British Association for Irish Studies prize giving. I'm Carla McGuinness, I'm the Chair of Council. And today you'll be hearing from quite a, from me and quite a few of my colleagues about our prizes and about some of the activity that we've done this year. Um, and I want to thank you um, and our, thank all of all of my oh, sorry, all of our council, um, all of you that have participated so enthusiastically um, in our event. Um, it's been really comforting to know that out there there's still so much um, enthusiasm for Irish studies. Um, it's been really lovely and really heartening and um, to see that all year so thank you very much um it's been um a year where we've really had to devise new ways of relating to each other and we they haven't always been perfect but i have just um in seeing especially and i know it's been really hard for um emerging scholars for phd scholars for early career researchers to find um places to network and to engage with each other so the fact that You've done so much this year and um, has really um, made us feel like um, the, this has been a bit of worthwhile endeavour. So thank you very much. Um, our prizes then are um, sponsored um, and, our, and our, um, our various judges will, will, will sort of mention and um, we have a, you know, a bursary prize sponsored by the Embassy of Ireland and we have um, a, an essay prize um, that is sponsored um, by um, Kim Jupiter oh. Press and the Irish Studies Review and you'll hear a little bit more about that and a book prize that's sponsored exclusively by us and you'll hear about that um, as we go through the prizes. So all I want to do is say um, welcome and thank you really and um, thank you for um, for this year and all the um, online hospitality um, that, that you've given the association. So we're just going to say a few words about the work that we do in the hope that you'll connect with some of that as, as, as we go forward into hopefully um, a bit of a brighter future. So first, I'd like to invite um, Vicky Barry Brown, um, who has responsibility for a lot of our um, sort of digital and web activity, to, to talk us through um, some of what um, her and the team have been doing this year. Hi, uh, um, yeah, as Caroline says, I'm Vicky, and uh, so earlier in the year, on March the seventeenth, uh, we had our research study day, which was a really vibrant day where people shared what they're working on via uh, Twitter, which was really showcasing the diverse nature of Irish studies. And this was a great precursor to our currently running Bayes Virtual Conference 2021. The virtual conference was introduced last year with great contributions and engagement. People take part by tweeting whatever they want to submit, whether that's an audio or a visual recording, a series of tweets or links to a project. And um, people do this by including the hashtag BayesConf2021. This means that people can search the hashtag to view the contributions, and these are also collated on a weight clipboard. And um, Lloyd May, I think, is going to be sharing some links to this in the chat. Um, so you can see all of the contributions, I think most of them at least, uh, on the wakelet, and that just gets continually updated as we go along. Uh, we kicked off the month with some very high praise of last year's event. It was described as really vibrant and dynamic. And uh, another person described it as another fantastic initiative from the Bayes team, which I think we were quite happy with that. Uh, so far, there's been a variety of contributions from academics at varying stages of their career, as well as non-academics. The majority of the submissions have come from historians. So if there's any non-historians there thinking about getting something in over the next few days, it would be excellent to see some contributions in some, some other areas too. Um, so far, we've had some talks on uh, women and the shaping of Irish identities in Melbourne, 1857 to 1920. Uh, we had an analysis of the 1991 made for television film, The Treaty. There was a panel discussion contributed on critical perspectives on commemorating partition, uh, a presentation addressing stereotypes through women's memoir, a personal reflection on 15 years talking about the North in public through the medium of New Order's Blue Monday by our Bayes chair, Caroline. Um, and also a presentation, which was a lockdown project looking at expressions of Irishness on the Rory Gallagher YouTube channel. So there's a few people who've tweeted to say that they're planning to contribute before the end of the month. Um, I've made something that I'm hoping to share as well. So watch out on Twitter and maybe add your own if you've got the time. And I'd also encourage you to take a look at the submissions we've had and maybe post some questions to the presenters. Um, so now I'll pass you to Lloyd Mays. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, thanks. Uh, thanks so much, um, Vicky, for that. Um, yeah, so I'm, uh, my name is Lloyd May of Houston. Um, I'm, well, I'm sort of pinballing between institutions at the moment, but um, I'm ultimately going to be um, taking up a, a sort of postdoctoral fellowship at the University of Alberta um, come next year, and I, I work on the um, cultural politics of sexual health and Irish modernism, um, among other things. But um, within Bayes, I'm uh, the um, communications officer, um, which means that if you've been part of the organization for any period of time, you'll probably have received an email from me at some point. Um, what I do is I compile our monthly newsletter, um, which, as you'll have seen from the chat there, um, is where we gather together um, events that are taking place or recordings of events that are taking place, um, CFPs for both kind of conferences and forthcoming publications. Um, we share publications that will be of interest um, to kind of members or that have been composed by members. Um, we also share um, kind of job opportunities um, or kind of resources that may be of interest to people working within Irish studies um, and kind of media and um, uh, maybe things oriented more toward a kind of generalist audience. Um, in order to compile that newsletter, I I, um, kind of draw on both things that we share via our sort of social media. So um, we're on Twitter, um, uh, as as you'll see there, um, and the link to our Twitter I think will be be shared. Um, and I kind of um, also look for stuff that's being kind of circulated under the hashtag Irish Studies. Um, so if you want to have something featured in the newsletter, and I would, you know, uh, it is very much something that lives or dies by the engagement of um, of our membership. So if there are things that you would like us to uh, to draw. Um, other members' attentions to, please do um, get in touch with me. I've posted my email there um, and, uh, and or um, sort of link us to stuff or tag us and stuff um, via social media. It's, um, it's always a kind of very, I mean, we have a sort of, you know, vibrant um, conversation always ongoing and it's great to see what everyone's up to. Um, and it's great to be able to kind of um, signpost that. Um, in terms of sort of other online stuff, as I say, we've got the, um, uh, the, the sort of Twitter and Facebook where a lot of our material um, gets sort of showcased. Um, so do, you know, check us out and do make sure to follow us if you are um, on Twitter um, or Facebook um, to keep abreast of what we're up to. Um, we also um, have been organizing a sort of series of um, online events, obviously, um, in, in, in recognition of the, the sort of practical difficulties that the last God knows how long, decade or so it feels like, um, have posed to actually coming together in person. Um, so uh, earlier in the year, um, we organized um, uh, a kind of uh, seminar session with Maria Enright from the University of Birmingham, um, who gave a, a really sort of informative and nuanced um, sort of breakdown of um, law, responsibility and history in the Mother and Baby Homes Committee of Investigation Report. Um, Vicky Barry Brown um, and uh, Neve Lear, another friend of Bay's, um, also came together for a, a wonderful event on uh, becoming Irish, Brexit, identity and citizenship. Um, earlier still, we had Anne Hall uh, from UCD who um, gave a, a, a wonderful and kind of, um, uh, you know, um, very uh, kind of galvanizing paper on uh, justice, not diversity, race, representation and resistance in contemporary Irish writing and culture. Um, and we also had a, a kind of big um, book launch sort of Barney around Christmas time. Um, that uh, allowed us to to showcase um, even more of the sort of wonderful work that's going on in our in our field. Um, another thing that kind of comes out of all this is that I, I also compile a kind of annual report that we present to Ephesus on on behalf of um, of, of Britain and Caroline kind of um, uh, delivers that to to them in, in her capacity with um, with Ephesus. And it's another opportunity for us to kind of um, make legible to um, you know, to, to other scholars and um, to scholars across the world, um, the kind of vibrancy of the work that goes on um, among um, the Irish studies community of Britain. So as ever, if there are things that you want to kind of signpost in that, that includes um, monograph publications, journal special issues, um, conferences and events, um, seminar series, also any sort of like large scale kind of grants um, for, you know, kind of Irish studies related projects that you've, um, that you've put together, any of that, send it all my way. Um, I, <laughs> um, I, I enjoy being inundated with um, with all the good work that you do, but it's, it's always a delight from uh, to hear from everyone involved in our membership. Um, so thank you so much for, for everything you've done. Congratulations to, to all our, our, our winners today. Um, and I, I look forward to, to hearing from you all in, in the not too distant future and hopefully even perhaps seeing you in person. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you very much, um, Oibiv. Um, next, I'd like to invite Sophie Cooper to talk to us about some of the initiatives that um, her and Erin Schopner have been leading on. 
to um, sort of help our early career researchers connect um, during 2021. Thanks, Caroline. And it, yeah, it's so lovely to see so many of you. Um, as Caroline mentioned, I and Erin Schuttner are the early career reps. Um, we take a very broad understanding of ECR, so including PhD students, um, and then however you, you choose to see yourself early career wise after that. So what we, what we really want is to be able to bring people together. Um, I know that there are certain kind of Irish history, well, Irish studies hotspots in different universities, but a lot of people doing Irish studies are often like the only person in their department working on Irish things. And so we're really trying to create a community where people from across uh, Britain can kind of come together and meet up. So we've created a ECR mailing list. So if you're not already on that, please do get in touch with either me or Erin. Um, I can put our email addresses in the, the chat, um, but we're also on Twitter. Well, I'm ranting away frequently. Um, so please do get in touch with us um, and we can add you to that mailing list. So far, we had our first online social on the 6th of May, which a few of you uh, came to. It's lovely to see people. Uh, and that was really lovely just for both kind of learning about what different people are doing, um, how they're finding doing Irish studies in, uh, in Britain, but also kind of uh, some lighthearted screaming into the void as well about academia so uh, it, it's wonderful to get people together for that we're also hosting our first online writing retreat on the 1st of June uh, so this is a kind of a, it's quite a structured day but it will be a kind of drop in drop out so if you want to just come for the morning that's absolutely fine um, again get in touch with us if you want more information um, over the next few months, we're hoping to do another social, um, so we'll publicise details of that. Um, probably some more writing retreats over the summer. Um, we've also kind of asked fellow ECRs what they, they fancy doing, and something that came up was kind of maybe some how-to, like workshops, you know, how to write an article and things like that. So we're, we're working on pulling together a programme to do with that, um, and also something that came out of the social was possibly doing um, an online reading group, uh, maybe on the state of the field. So more information will be, be coming. We uh, try to publicize these things with the help of Lloyd Maeve and Vicky um, on Twitter and Facebook. But uh, as I said, we also have this mailing list. So please get in touch and yeah, hopefully I'll meet a few more of you in the future. Thank you very much, Sophie. That was that was really helpful, and thank you so much for for all the activity that you've been been leading on. Um, I'd like to firstly invite um, in the presentation of our prizes. So we've now entered the 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 um, the, the presentation part of our of our event today. Um, I'd like to invite um, Derval Tuberty, I'm Professor Goldsmith, to um, tell us about our essay prize this year. Thank you so much, Caroline. Um, once again, it's always a pleasure to talk about our essay prize. Uh, the essay prize of the British Association for Irish Studies is a vital platform to showcase the best in recent Irish studies scholarship at postgraduate level in Britain. Entries from all disciplines are always welcome. We are grateful to Cambridge University Press and the Irish Studies Review for valued support for the prize. I'm delighted to announce that the 2021 Bayes Essay Prize is being awarded to Dexter Govan with an essay titled Towards a Religious Understanding of the Orange Order, Belfast 1910 to 1914. Dexter Govan is a Justin Arbuthnot Scholar in Modern Irish History and PhD candidate in the Department of History, Classics and Archaeology at the University of Edinburgh. His work focuses on Orangism in Ireland and Britain in the Edwardian era. And now I'm going to first of all congratulate Dexter very much for the award and to hand over to him to say a few words. Over to you Dexter and congratulations. Uh, thank you very much, Professor, uh, and thank you 
thank you as well to the, the judges of the Essay Prize and everyone associated with the British Association of Irish Studies. Um, since the beginning of the COVID-19 crisis, uh, research has been very difficult for everyone, but, but perhaps especially so for early career researchers. Uh, for many, including myself, uh, it has meant working from small flats or perhaps noisy and shared accommodation. Uh, added to this, the general state of financial peril that most early career scholars find themselves in, uh, and it has been particularly difficult to make progress. Uh, that's why this year I've been particularly grateful for the work of the British Association of Irish Studies in helping to maintain a tremendous community of Irish Studies scholars in Britain, uh, and particularly for the work of the early career representatives in this regard. Uh, I'm delighted and humbled that my essay on the religiosity of oranges has won the essay prize. When it appears in Irish Studies Review in November, it will mark my first academic publication, uh, a significant career milestone for any budding scholar. Uh, I believe the essay prize provides a fantastic opportunity for PhD students like myself to find our feet in academia within the supportive environment of the association. Uh, I'm hopeful that this publication will be the first of many, uh, and I'm delighted that it will be in collaboration with an organisation which does so much to support early career researchers in Irish studies. Uh, so thank you very much again, everyone. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dexter. Huge round of applause. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Dexter. They were really wonderful, really wonderful, heartening words. Thank you so, so much. Um, Next, we have, um, I'd like to invite Erica Hanna to present our bursary prizes, which are sponsored by the um, Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade um, of the Government of Ireland um, through the Irish Embassy in London. Thanks very much, Caroline, and um, thanks for all coming. Um, I, so it, actually, this was a real bumper year for, for bursary applications. We had 15 applicants, which was um, the most I've ever uh, adjudicated in my time as bursary secretary. So it's really heartening to see uh, the health and vitality of Irish studies in Britain, especially in such trying times. Um, and it'll be really great to see um, you know, how you all spend the money and fingers crossed you get to spend it on um, physical trips to, to real archives and um, real days out and um, to, to look at to look at new things, uh, historical or otherwise. Um, but, and, you know, when you do, we, we'd um, really, really like um, to to hear about it and, um, uh, you know, publish, you know, uh, disseminate uh, what you're up to. So um, I'd just like to thank all the applicants um, for such, you know, inspiring and exciting, getting, letting me read such inspiring and exciting work in Irish studies and um, thank Jim and Peter, my fellow judges, and of course um, the embassy for their sponsorship of this prize. And I, that's what I want to say really, because I want to move on and let all the prize winners uh, take the stage for just a couple of minutes to tell us about their work and um, and tell us what they're going to do with the money. So I'll just do it in alphabetical order. So I'll start with Elizabeth Cosi from Oxford for her, who um, won a bursary for her project, Italy and the Irish Romantics, Networks, Nations and Literary Encounters, 1798 to 1848. Hi, thank you, and it's great to meet you all. Um, my project uh, explores the literary connections and uh, intellectual nectars between um, Italy and Ireland in the Romantic period, uh, with a focus on the works by Irish expatriates and exiles in the Italian peninsula between the United Irishmen Rebellion and the uh, Nationalist Risings in 1848. Um, thanks to the generosity of, the, of this award, I'm hoping to organise a trip to the National Library in, in Dublin to work on the Owenstone Papers over the summer and hopefully also um, a trip to Tuscany to a private archive where I'll be working and transcribing some manuscript by some Irish members of the, the extended Byron Shelley circle active in Pisa in the 1820s. So thank you very much again. Thanks, Elise. Um, next we have Will Fleming and his project, he won for his project, Small Press Poetry and the Modernization and Modernization in Ireland, 1859. 2017. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Hannah, and the uh, the, the bursary committee and the um, association in general. Uh, sorry, it's it, 1959, not 1859. That would be. Uh, <laughs> sorry. 
<laughs> that's all right. Um, I, yeah, just in explaining, I hope that, you know, um, it wasn't going to lead people astray. Um, but yeah, so, so my project um, basically looks at the sort of the social, political, economic and cultural changes um, uh, that, that have occurred in Ireland since 1959, the year that um, Sean Lamas came to power. Um, th th those things have kind of come under that um, umbrella of modernization um, and looking at how they um, impacted the kind of production methods of a number of uh, small kind of predominantly avant-garde um, poetry presses in Ireland over that sort of 60 year span. Um, and in turn, how the, uh, the, the work that those presses were publishing responded uh, directly and often quite critically to those various different aspects um, of modernization. Um, and so, so with, with uh, this bursary, I'm hoping to make a couple of uh, trips back to my, my native Dublin um, after what 15 or 16 months away from it um, to go to the uh, Irish Arts Council archive because um, basically all of the small presses that I'm looking at, um, they all at some point in their operation needed help from the Irish Arts Council, but it was not always, uh, they, they didn't always have good relationships, I suppose. And so I'm interested in kind of going and figuring out the kind of the, the nuances of that and the, and the kind of the nitty gritty of, of what happened um, between the presses and the um, and the Arts Council um, over that sort of 60 year period. Um, so yeah, so thank you so much once again. Um, it's, I, I, I think it goes without saying that particularly in times like these, it's, um, it's great to have some kind of external recognition. It does a lot to alleviate the kind of effects of the imposter syndrome. So thank you so much. Thanks very much, Will. Um, and thirdly, we have Abigail Fletcher from Edinburgh for um, who won a bursary for her prize and uh, for her project, sorry, from partition to decriminalization, homosexuality in Northern Ireland, 1921 to 1982. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's lovely to see you all. Um, as Erica mentioned, I'm in I'm Abigail and I'm in the first year of my PhD here at the University of Edinburgh, where my PhD is looking at the history of the decriminalisation of homosexuality in Northern Ireland in the 20th century. Um, so in terms of the support of the BAIS, it's really important because my project um, really intersects with a lot of the relations across the Irish border and across the Irish Sea. So it's very comparative and transnational um, legal history. Um, but in addition to that, I'm also looking at the social and cultural factors that shaped homosexual experience in 20th century Northern Ireland and trying to get some um, subjective history in there too. So the BIS prize is really important in terms of helping my future archival visits, um, which I'm thoroughly looking forward to because I haven't seen inside an archive since December 2019. Um, so that will help me look at some very understudied sources, um, including the Northern Ireland Gay Rights Association archive at the Public Record Office in Northern Ireland. Um, also at Prony are the Cara Friend letters, which are some really interesting sources, um, if any of you know, of the befriending organisation where gay men and women um from northern ireland sort of contact this befriending service um from the 1970s onwards so i'm really looking forward to using those sources um and i'm also going to use the fund to visit various archives in dublin and london as well as the kevin boyle archive at nui in galway so it's really really appreciated um uh, will make such a difference to my research and i'm looking forward to keeping you all updated as things progress so thank you very much to everyone Thanks very much, Abigail. And next we have uh, Phoebe Gill from Birmingham, who won a bursary for her project, Women's Experiences of Sex and Desire in Ireland, 1870 to 1928. Hi, um, I'm, yeah, as uh, Erica said, um, I'm at Birmingham and I'm in the first year of my PhD. Um, and I'd just like to thank um, the British Association for Irish Studies and um, the Irish Embassy for this opportunity because um, the bursary is going to make a really big difference to my research as well. Um, my project is taking a comparative approach between Ireland and Britain um, focused on letter writing and other forms of personal testimony to explore how women understood, felt and expressed um, experiences of sex, bodies and desires in the late 19th and early 20th to mid 20th century. 
Um, I'm interested in particular in how women learnt about their bodies and other people's bodies, sex and desires and pleasures, and how this translated or didn't into letter writing um, as a medium to forge understandings of the self and the intimate. Um, I'm hoping to sort of use um, the current research into sexuality and sexual expression um, to build on to explore how um, experiences of sex bodies and desires were culturally specific and mediated by different factors such as gender, age, disability, geography, race, and religion. Um, this project feels really significant to me because um, I want to really pay attention to how women themselves experienced and used language to write about their experiences of sex. And I think this is something quite underrepresented in the field at the moment. Um, and as well in histories of sexuality focusing on Britain, there's a lack of representation of Irish women's experiences, both as, um, as emigrants to Britain. So I'm really interested in that dynamic as well. Um, and yeah, this prep bursary prize is going to help me go to the Dublin Diocesan Archives and the National Library of Ireland to view um, various papers from um, different arch archbishops and also private collections of letters where I'm hoping to find material um, where women primarily wrote about their bodies and their sort of sexual experiences, um, whether that was in a lot of detail or not much at all. So thank you very much um, for the opportunity and I really appreciate um, being able to share my research and I look forward to sort of networking with all more in the future. Thank you. Thanks very much, Phoebe. And next we have Struan Kennedy from Northumbria, um, who has a project, um, whose project is rewriting on the wall, disarming weaponized murals of masculinities in Northern Ireland. And sadly, Struan can't be with us today, so I'm just going to read out a brief summary of his project. Struan's project um, examines what masculinities are communicated in the symbolic landscape of loyalist murals. Um, an implication um, of this research is, is ex exploring the effects that these representations have not only on daily realities of the, the next generation, um, but on the delicate climate of um, Northern Ireland. The project considers the archetypes of the of orthodoxy, which invariably contribute to a deeply polarized understanding of a difficult past through difficult depictions and explicitly um, uh, and an explicitly uh, threatening territorial imagery. He will also explore what alternative masculinities and um, how alternate masculinities have been more recently depicted in, in loyalist murals in Northern Ireland and how these new alternate masculinities might facilitate ongoing processes of social transformation and peace building in a post-conflict society. And similarly, um, uh, the bursary will also enable Struan to visit um, Northern Ireland and do some um, ethnographic fieldwork on murals um, in Belfast. So next up, well done, Stro. Next up, we have Michael Livesey, uh, who won a bursary for his project from uh, Dissident to Deviant, a genealogy of terrorism in Northern Ireland. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. It's so, so great to hear about so many interesting projects and I'm glad to be included amongst them. And thanks to everyone who organised this bursary and judged for, 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 help, for including me in that respect. Um, so yeah, I'm also in the first year of my PhD um, at Sheffield and I'm looking, I started off looking at the discourse on terrorism from the period of the war on terror and what I wanted to find out was where the discourse comes from um, and I traced it in the Hansard record of parliamentary discussion and found that um, the, the idea of terrorism first emerged in the 1970s in the context of the Northern Ireland conflict and um, the criminalization policy which the British government used to try and discipline paramilitarism during that conflict. So the, the first part of my project is exploring the language of the criminalization policy in, in sources like Hansard. But the second part, which is uh, where this award comes in, um, is a, a visit to Belfast to visit some of the security installations built under criminalization, like the Mays Prison and the McGabbery Prison, but also some of the security installations in, in Belfast itself to conduct a spatial analysis of, of the criminalization policy alongside the linguistic analysis. And like I say, the, the, the funding from this award will, will help um, fund that, that research. Um, 
I'm also hoping at the end of my PhD to, to organize an exhibition of some of the photos and sketches and, and data visualizations that come from that spatial analysis. And I'm earmarking this funding to, uh, to pay for the costs of that exhibition in the hope that it will give me a chance to disseminate my findings beyond the small number of people who read the thesis. So um, hopefully, yeah, hopefully this award will go towards that. I'm really, really grateful to Bayes and to the, to the panel for, for giving me this award. Thanks very much, Michael. Um, and next, we move on to Jessica McIntyre from Leeds Beckett, who won a bursary for her project, Food Cultures of Ireland, New Culinary Perspectives on the Irish Bourgeoisie in the mid 19th century. You're on mute, Jessica. No, you're back on mute. <laughs> you came off mute for a second. Jessica, you're still on mute. <laughs> Sorry. Hello. Got got you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, it's always a disaster uh, with me. But, um, so uh, Thanks very much to begin with. Um, I really appreciate getting this award. It's going to help tremendously with my research. I'm a second year PhD student at Leeds Beckett University. I graduated from the University of Ulster, but I live in Leeds now. So, But my research focuses on the food cultures of Ireland, as you, as you said, in the 19th century. And what I really want to do is sort of change the sort of accepted view that um, the diets of the Irish were a bit bland. So, um, and considering the research I've already undertaken at the NLI, the National Library, Ireland's food cultures was way more diverse and, and interesting than, than previously thought. And so I'm looking at how foodways, in other words, how we, how we access, prepare and consume food can actually be used as a, as a tool to reinforce social status, both inside and, and outside of the home as well. So I'll be looking at private manuscripts um, of, of the wealthier uh, population of Ireland, um, which are held in local and county archives. And according to some of the, the websites that are really underutilized resource. So um, I'll be traveling to archives in Westmeath, Prony as well, Public Records Office of Northern Ireland. Um, and Lifford and uh, Cork as well and NUA as well. So this, this is a, a great help and it will enable me to travel back to Ireland and, and conduct this research. So thank you very much again. Thanks very much. Uh, and then finally, we've Josie Richardson from Oxford for, and who won a bursary for her project um, from Dungannon to Drum Cree Street Politics in Northern Ireland. Um, hello everyone. Um, first of all, thank you to the British Association for Irish Studies, the Irish Embassy and particularly Erica. Um, yeah, so as Erica said, my um, doctoral project is about street politics during the Troubles from 1968 to 1998. Um, so it really covers everything from street protests, peaceful demonstrations to street violence. Um, during some of the major protest campaigns throughout the conflict. Um, and this award will, like many of you, support research back to Belfast, um, where I did my master's and haven't been back since I graduated from that. Um, and Prony, but also um, the Linen Hall Northern Ireland Political Collection and um, to the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum and um, Belfast Central Library. Um, thank you very much. Um, yeah. Thanks very much. And uh, now I'm handing over um, to Nick. So thanks for our to Thank you very much, Erica, and congratulations again to all of our bursary winners and uh, the essay prize winner as well. Uh, I'm Dr. Nick Taylor Collins. I'm the book prize coordinator. And in some ways, I'd like to think that the, the book prize is the pinnacle of the base prizes. Um, or at least I want you to think that you're now as bursary winners and as essay prize winners, you're on your way to submitting your book to a future prize. 
and uh, hopefully winning it as well. Um, this is our third running of the Base Book Prize. Um, and year on year, the diversity in the topics that you know, the books are about has uh, increased. And um, this has been true this year as well. Um, we run a, sh a, a very rigorous shortlisting process and we have a new chair of the jury this year from UCC, Dr. Kleenega, Kleena O'Gallica, who uh, very ably stepped into Professor Ian McBride's shoes from last year. So thank you to him, let's put that on record. Thanks to him for last year. Um, but Kleena uh, was a very welcome addition to our team uh, and has the ability of being situated working at Cork um, at UCC. So she's outside our organization and is therefore able to um, look with fresh eyes on the submissions uh, and to discuss with our other jurors. Um, so the jury drawn from our council, but also from external to the council, um, were ably assisted by a couple of our uh, council members in the final shortlisting uh, evaluations with Kleena. Uh, and we have two books or two authors I want to highlight today. Um, the first is our highly commended winner, who's Dr. Stephen Miller, who uh, is a Leverhulme Early Career Fellow at the School of Music at Cardiff. Um, and his book, Sounding Descent, Rebel Songs, Resistance and Irish Republicanism, was published by Ann Arbor. And the jurors had the, the following comments to say. Um, first, Miller's Sounding Descent is a fascinating deep dive into the Belfast subculture around rebel songs. And it constitutes definitely a very original contribution as the first book on the subject. And indeed, the originality stretches beyond simply rebel songs to make contributions to wider understandings of republicanism. Uh, and I'm very happy to see that Stephen is with us today. And uh, I now invite him if he wants to say a few words um, and we can congratulate him for uh, being highly commended in this year's prize. Thanks very much, Nick. Um, uh, I, I was, it was a pleasure to, to get your email um, with, with that commendation. I was, I was, I was rightly chuffed. Um, I'm afraid I haven't written anything down, uh, so I can't speak as uh, fluidly or fluently as, as, as the others uh, before me, but um, I would just like to say thanks very much. Um, the book was based on uh, my doctoral work at Queen's University Belfast. Um, and uh, as you say, it's, it's focusing on the cultural politics of Irish Republicanism, specifically on uh, rebel songs and how Irish Republicans have used uh, rebel songs and music more generally as a means to resist against the hegemonic power of the British state from the late 18th century up to the present. Um, uh, I wouldn't really describe myself as a historian, um, uh, lest I get uh, caught out um, for, um, for, for maybe not giving uh, enough attention to some of, the, uh, some of the intricacies of some of the earlier periods, but it does set up that earlier period um, as a means to really uh, situate and contextualise what's been happening here um, uh, in Belfast and the surrounding areas within this uh, Republican music scene. Uh, and use that to just to, to sort of focus on how um, Republicans have, have used that uh, music as a means to sort of claim the mantle um, of, of Republicanism, particularly when uh, operating across different uh, groups. And the, the book finishes up by um, exploring some of the difficulties within the contemporary uh, Republican music scene, wherein you've got uh, mainstream Sinn Féin aligned uh, uh, thought uh, and, and, and players. Uh, using this music and also so-called dissident Republicans uh, using this music and, and the sort of the way that these two groups uh, under use the exact same music but understand it quite differently um, and how these contestations are continuing to to play out in uh, in, in, the, in the current period. Great, thank you very much and congratulations once again. Cheers. Uh, which leads me to announce that the 2021 winner of the Base Book Prize is Dr. Erica Hanna, who's a senior lecturer in modern history at Bristol. And her book published by OUP is called Snapshot Stories, Visuality, Photography and the Social History of Ireland, 1922 to 2000. And uh, Dr. Cleano O'Gallica, I will pronounce the name correctly one, once today. Uh, had this to say of Erica's book. The depth of archival research on which it is based is extraordinary, and the way in which Hannah has sifted and combined these different archival elements 
to create a compelling and beautifully written book is incredibly impressive. The various methodologies and conceptual frameworks Hannah uses, in fact, makes her research accessible for readers from many disciplinary backgrounds and will ensure a wide readership and considerable impact for her work. Uh, so congratulations to Erica, and I'd now like to hand over to her to say a few words. Thanks very much, Nick, and um, thanks to all the, the judges of the book prize. Um, I, you know, like everyone has said here, it's been a long, tough year, and it was um, a really, really nice um, email to get. Um, so um, uh, I am. Um, I, I was thinking back, and I remember coming up with this: the idea that I'd write a book about photography in Ireland. And it's so long ago. I was in the Bodleian, and uh, doing my PhD. So I think it must have been 2010. And I was, you know, I'm sure a lot of people here feel like this. I was, I absolutely desperately needed a postdoc project, and I thought, oh, photographs, photographs. I get, I could write about photographs, and and um, and um, ten years later, the book came out after numerous short-term jobs you know, postdocs, different jobs in different locations. So, so it was um, a really sort of, um, you know, you know, it's like being an ECR, it's kind of a wild ride <laughs> getting this book done. And sometimes I thought it would never get done. Um, so uh, just to briefly tell you, this is a book about social, social histories of photography in 20th century Ireland. And, um, you know, looks at photograph albums, studio portraits, photographic clubs, community photography initiatives and sort of citizen, citizen based activism around photography. And really it, com it also comes out of um, the intellectual climate of the last 10 years or 20 years in Ireland in that I was, I've been really struck by discourses of um, turning a blind eye, invisible histories, hidden histories that, that characterize debate in Ireland. And I wanted to use photographs to think about what that means. Obviously um, it is normally meant debate about Raglan, laundries and um, institutions in Irish life, but I want to think about it broad, more broadly uh, to go beyond that as, as to think about choices around seeing and not seeing as, as something um, that we do every day in Ireland. And really, so that's, that's what the book is, uh, is about, is kind of my own attempt to come to terms with, with, with um, what we've witnessed in Irish history over the past, um, in the past generation. Um, so here it is. I have, I have a copy here, and um, you know, please do read it. And um, because I have to say, you know, I, I worked on this book for ten years, and then it came out during maternity leave, a strike, and a pandemic, and I actually thought no one would ever read it. So it's, it's nice, and um, you know, it's it's nice that someone has. Um, so uh, I just want to say thank you to a few people, and and that includes um, all the institutions that house this book. Um, to colleagues at Oxford, Leicester, Edinburgh, and Bristol, in particular, shout out to Leicester. And um, as I really had just had the most wonderful time there, it's the most incredible institution in the most incredible city. And I know, um, you know, it's having a hard time at the moment. So we should do all we can to support our colleagues at Leicester, and also just all the photographers and archivists who um, made this book possible because. Archiving um, photographs and working with photographs is, is really difficult. You know, they're very vulnerable, sensitive objects, and um, and a lot of people give a huge amount of time to making and money to, to making archiving photographs in Ireland um, work. So thank you to all of them, in particular to, to Derek Spears, Joanne O'Brien, and um, uh, Frankie Quinn, among many others, who provided so many oral histories for this book and such extensive extensive oral histories, because often photographers are, are condemned for being unethical, for being voyeurs, and there's people in this book who really thought very hard about what that meant and, and talked candidly and openly about the difficult choices they made as photographers and how they tried to, to both, you know, expose the realities of Irish life at a time when maybe journalism wasn't doing that, but at the same time be reflective of their own power and, and um, you know, they, they talked openly about making tough decisions and um, trying to be sort of sensitive and pragmatic as photographers. And that was just so inspiring that they uh, let me into that. Um, so, um, and just thanks, you know, to all of you, to the um, Irish Studies community in Britain, which has just been such a great home for me. So thanks very much. Cheers.
Thank you very much, Eric. And I see lots of um, lots of congratulations um, there, in, there in the chat for you. Very well deserved. Um, so um, th thanks very much to, to Nick and his team um, for judging. Um, and obviously thanks to Eric and Stephen for, for writing such um, wonderful books as well. And both participated in our first um, online book launch that we had right before Christmas as well. So it's really lovely to see the, to see the work getting, getting celebrated in this way. So um, just a couple of things and then we can we can all um, go and get on with our get on with our days. Um, is that the digital conference is ongoing until as as um, Lord Dave and Vicky said until the end of the month. So I hope if you haven't participated already, um, you'll you'll put something together for that, which would be lovely. Um, we're currently cooking up some seminar events and other things um, for the next few months as well. So we really hope that you continue to um, support us as well um, uh, virtually over the next um, over the next few months. Um, for those of you that are new to the organization, um, normally this prize giving, I don't want to be like, this is what you could have won, but normally this prize giving takes place in the embassy with um, little canapes. Um, sometimes they are black pudding um, if you eat meat and um, sort of like, like sort of horseradish vegetables if, you, if you're a vegetarian like me. What I have said to the embassy is that um, as soon as we're allowed to be in person again and we start having prize givings, we're going to invite everyone who won this year and last year and um, to those events so that you can have your your nice day and have your photograph in the embassy for your mammies and stuff as well <laughs> so hopefully we'll all be um we'll be together and we'll be in the room um this time next year it'll be really i'm really looking forward to meeting all of you because although um it's not the same thing but although and um, you all haven't um, really been able to sort of debut your way into the academic world we haven't met you either and the way that we stay involved and stay interested is by hearing from early career researchers and finding out what they're doing so we can't wait um, to meet you as well so um until next year um thank you very much um for being part of the british association for irish studies um and please keep um sharing and um supporting the irish studies community thanks very much Congratulations, everyone. Woo